in a world crying out for a top 10 show. John Roca and Matt Nost are here to bring you the top 10. Brought to you by the Schmoes No. Take it away, boys. All right, welcome everybody to this episode of the Top Ten Show. Uh, this is going to be a fun one. We we we've been we've taken you know the way we're, our schedule is going, Matt. We, we record these like combined, right, all in one, like two two a two day, at a time. two at a time. One day we pick a day and we just record two at a time. So yeah. that's just how that this it's efficient for both. People of us. have already noticed. Yeah, uh, yeah, of course they. Because one guy was like, "Oh, they must have recorded this in the future because they're not talking about Kyrie at all." <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> That's the easiest way to spot if we can't do any like breaking yeah. news on sports, but especially NBA. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard shit. to hide that anymore. We're kind of shitty in that way. Yeah. Yeah, but, but hey, we, we're both super busy with everything we got going on. So it's like, you just be happy that, once again, just be yeah, happy. Yeah, you sons of bitches. <laughs> So just, many people went just attacking them right off the gate. I like this. This is great, John. Yeah. We should set up more shows like this. Just I think pepper they, them in. They like to be attacked by us for most of, but most of the time. You know, there's the occasional snowflake, but most of the time, it's everyone enjoys yeah, but that's busting life. their balls. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. life. They yeah. tune in for us talking movies. Exactly. So most of them have known us in some capacity for quite a long time. Yeah. So there's just kind of like a comfortable, like, yeah, I know who you are. Exactly. I know where the jokes are coming from. Exactly. So I'm not concerned that you're going to be too, like, even if we took it too far, there's still like, a, you know who we are, so this is just a joke. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Don't be sensitive. Exactly. This ain't the show for sensitivity. I mean, some of your <laughs> You movies... set it up, though, for like anybody that's <laughs> new this week, like, we're just going to go so raw on some topic. <laughs> If you're if you're listening if you're listening to us the listen to Cisco and Ebert you're in the wrong show you're in the wrong show that's for damn sure did you watch Cisco and Ebert of course growing yep. up yes yep. they were the ones that got me into like looking at film in a whole new way yeah honestly like I had no idea how to analyze film until I watched them and I was like how the fuck did they pull that out of that and then you start to kind of hone your own brain as you look at films and watch films you're like, oh yeah I, oh oh okay you look at it through just a more nuanced mature perspective yeah the older yeah. you get the more films you've seen it just you know, it updates your opinion and be like, oh, I can compare and contrast to this. So right. I have plus I understand the subtext of what they're trying to say in between what they're not saying. Right. Uh, just just adulthood as it grew, you grow up and you realize, you know, people say things or try and evoke images in others. Right. By numerous means. Yeah. Any sense that you have, they've tried to assault you and make you conjure some sort of image in your head. Yeah. Uh, and anyway, so welcome to the show. <laughs> and Ebert, <laughs> Siskel and Ebert right off the top. I just started thinking about them on the balcony and yeah. and then uh, just talking, like awkwardly turning to each other eventually to talk. And I, yeah. that, that, was a good, that was technically a hit show because it ran for oh, yeah, right, so long. Yeah, for decades from yeah. what I understand. Yeah. Just ridiculous. This is John Roca, by the way. I'm Matt Nost. <laughs> this is the top 10 this show. This is the top 10 show. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, Gene Shalit was someone I listened to. I watched on NBC <laughs> today. Remember Gene Shalit? I remember. I remember that the, I knew the caricature okay, before okay. I knew Gene Shout. <laughs> because it was, how did this guy get on TV? That's right, with that it's one of those guys where you're just like, wow, you know, yeah. I guess he is a character and there's something there to watch and he's engaging. And he was. Anybody out there that's never seen Gene Shout, like, go on YouTube right now and just admire that mustache and hair combo. <laughs> Yeah. Because that's a doozy. And it was more, I mean, like, I knew what he was talking about. It was completely different from, like, watching him was like watching someone read you a column or, or uh, their uh, their review of a film, whereas Siskel and Ebert were about discussing the film. Yeah. And I thought that was so much interesting. Like, you get that kind of balance. So Gene was, like, the one that goes, like, I would watch. Because NBC Today Show was full of, those, like, Willard Scott, all those. They, they've sure. always had personalities. Good Morning America never did that. CBS never did that. But NBC always did. They always liked personalities. Mm -hmm. And so Shallot was one of those guys. And then, you know, I'd f filter every once in a while over to Rex Reed. And I never liked Rex Reed. Yeah, Rex I little, never liked Rex Reed. Rex he, was a little bitchy. He was a little bitchy. Exactly. He had a little American Psycho kind of undertone where this guy could snap. He's just a little too put together, which means behind closed doors, he's just a chaotic mess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because his pre Probably. presentation of the world is this articulate, yeah. like very studious. Just, just watch him. He's got those piercing kind of yeah. eyes. And oh, man. Yeah. Rex Reed, there's a name I haven't. Oh, heard yeah. or nor thought of in quite a long time. I know we go back in the old days, man. Back, back in the old days, kids. 
they used to put this stuff on TV. You could enjoy and watch it. Now it's now it's you know a bunch of dudes on on a on a couple of mics like us. Yeah, shooting the shit about film. Exactly. <laughs> Everybody has an opinion now. Welcome to the internet age. That's right. That's yeah, right. There's nothing wrong with it. Everybody's got an opinion. Yeah. Just whether or not I agree that yours is right. <laughs> it's an opinion, so you're not wrong. I just if I don't agree, then it is not. You know, it's not right in my world. I can't wait till we have the top ten network. That's going to be the network. The top ten network <laughs> just shows all day. Well, shit, we're going to have to have ten shows at the start. At the least, yeah. Well, just ten to start because this yeah. is the top ten. We got our ten shows. Oh, good point. It's just easy tie-in. Good That's point. a lot of work. From the moment we start, we have to have ten shows. Ten. I got some ideas. There's five days a week. <laughs> we're just two a day. Oh my god. <laughs> Seriously, you know what we get after we get any kind of money coming in? It's yeah. guns, because I'm going to blow my brains out. <laughs> <laughs> Doing three hours a day of talking movies. I'm going to turn into Gene Shallot. Just, just crazy. I just yeah. see that progression over <laughs> months on the network. Just randomly, every once in a while, you're like, your, your, your mustache goes yeah, a bit little bigger, little and your hair really just poofs right before you. And you're like, oh, shit, he's changing. It's like bad CGI Fucking from CG. back in the day when they used claymation <laughs> and they just do like just abrupt jumps. It's <laughs> just that. <laughs> this progression and ultimately I am X. <laughs> it's just, one episode where it just starts, hey, everyone, and I was like, oh my God, I'm just staring at the yeah. camera with my eyes blink <laughs> wide open, just blinking. And then finally out of nowhere, the glasses. <laughs> That's right, the glasses. Just <laughs> manifest themselves out of thin air. And then you get the <laughs> bing, Indian screen. <laughs> <laughs> Those different colors go technical difficulties <laughs> all right so all right there's show number two. <laughs> oh, man. oh eight more to go eight more, <laughs> eight more to go we'll, we'll work on it we'll work on it oh man uh well this week we are doing uh as you can tell by the title of the episode the top 10 heist movies in uh -huh. honor of uh lucky was it lefty logan lucky logan lucky that's it the new soderbergh film with uh, daniel craig and channing tatum and adam driver and a bunch of other actors mm -hmm. and actresses. Great cast. Yeah, it looks like a great cast. It looks yeah. like a fun time. Yeah, it looks very cool. Yeah. Has a good sense of itself. Hopefully it's fun. Yeah. Be seeing it this weekend at some point. Yeah, me too. And I, I think because, like, Soderbergh, you know, I remember a few years ago, he was, like, going to retire and he was not going to do films anymore. And it's like... We need that yeah. voice. You need to stay making films. It, we, you know, hit or miss, you still need to keep making films. Because, you know, I think you... When you hit, your hits are great. True. And uh, when you when you don't hit, that's all right. But like the hits are so good that they carry you over into yeah. the next thing. Yeah. Please keep working. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So we so we thought we'd tackle the subject and this this is an interesting subject, Matt, because like it's like, well, is it one heist? Is it numerous heists? Is it like what do you consider a heist? So it's like uh, just like the road trip movie, the road trip ones we did. It was like, well, what is it considered a road trip? A racing movie or a touring movie? Also, there's a lot of definitions for this. Yeah. There's the topic has depth. Yeah. You can interpret it a number of different ways. Right. Um, one you've already hit upon is, is it a heist film to me? Right. That's that's my key because there's one that I don't have that a lot of mm. people are like, that's a heist film. Be like, no, it's not. Mm. It is not. Like, I understand what you're saying. Right. But to me, like, a heist is, like, on some level, I need to see a few different things. Like, they're either planning a heist. Yes. Or you see the progression as the heist builds. Right. Like, maybe you don't need to see all the nuances of what's behind the scenes. You just see their actions and you see it progress and they have meetings every once and again then you see you know something where they're building a fucking heist yeah. to eventually pull off in the end otherwise yeah. the heist is just incidental to pushing other forms of story forward right and it's just like well that's not a heist film to me that's a plot device Ooh. for this other film oh that's ner that makes me nervous but okay well, well that's just we'll me see. no i know i know and it's just me because like there's there's two that i'm like okay well if we really want to go obtuse with this definition why not include this sure that's a good point yeah because there's a hell of a heist in it, but yeah, we, we'll, we'll see. I don't know. We will see. We will uh, see. John's already making faces like, oh shit, he's got some stuff on his <laughs> list. I'm worried. And I didn't include one that I think that has been on enough lists and I left it off. So you may you may make me put it on it on our final list, but I, I left it off because it's been on enough lists already. Okay. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, but anyway, Matt, you want to tell me how the show works? Sure, no problem. Once John and I set a topic, we go our separate ways and create individual top 10 lists and then show back up here. I do my bottom three. He does his bottom three. I do my next two. He does his next two. Then we trade one apiece. Once we've uh, exchanged our personal top 10s, we create the shows between the two of us. Boom. That was a really good one. That was a good one. Oh, shit. That was a good one. I'm glad this is being recorded. I felt in the moment on that one. So I'm going to put this down and mm. date it. Trust me. Frame this podcast. Trust me. The next one we do, I will screw up at least once. <laughs> it's fine. Fine, fine. You, you can only do it right so many times. That's right. Uh, uh, all right, let's let's kick it off. 
Tons of movies to choose from. Yes, there is. So there's also personal opinion comes into this. Of course. Yeah. It's our lists. Certain movies are like, that's an excellent movie. Yeah. But it's very similar to a couple of others that I have, because you can do a heist a bunch of different ways. Sure, sure, sure. Some are more mental, some are more like aggressive physical. Mm-hmm. So just like, uh, I've got a bunch kind of like that already, and I prefer these. Yeah. Um, just a product of when I saw them, the number of times I've seen them since. Right. That's the other thing about I like about a heist film. I can rewatch it. Yes. It's still fun years later. Yep. Agreed. So it's an easy genre to get back into. So my number 10 is yeah. one of those. It's a personal choice. Okay. Thomas Crown Affair. Oh. With uh, Pierce Brosnan. We have to punt. And Rene Ruth to Dewey. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes. Perfect. Just a little bit, but we do have to punt. That's fine. Right. Go ahead. My, What's your number? My nine? number nine is A Fish Called Wanda. That's my number 10. Is it? Yes. Wow. Let's talk about it. Oh, nice. I didn't think uh, we'd have either of those. Yeah. Uh, uh, excellent movie. Such a great, great comedy, man. It is, man. John Cleese and was it Michael Palin? Yep. Jamie Lee Curtis, Kevin Klein. There's your main yeah. cast. Yep. And it's just the four. And then of that them. British dude. And that which British dude? The weird British dude with the who was like was with Jamie Curtis at the beginning of the film with the oh voice. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, no one uh, talks George about yeah, or whatever George. I don't know his real name is is the actor exactly yeah because he's trying to play like I don't know this gangster on the way up so he yeah. wants to be more posh yeah and it's like he, sometimes it's funny because Kevin Klein was like I, what was that second part because he always can't get through his accent <laughs> yeah. but it's genuine because he's a guy that wants to think he's really intelligent but he's an idiot yeah 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 oh it's just great all the comedy they get Kevin Klein's awesome man. yes uh, Michael Palin when you know the stuttering yeah just uh it's just uh, as people are trying to guess the word along with them, you know, John Cleese, what wrote it and directed it. Yeah, yeah, which so, is pretty amazing. It is, uh, and so much of that, some of their, inter- so much of their interactions are what is great about the movie. The heist itself is fun and and enjoyable and everything like that. But it it's, is, it's what happens around the heist that really makes the movie, and that's really the signature of a great heist film. I think uh, is like every you invested in everyone else who's involved in the heist, you yeah. know, and what happens. And Jamie Lee Curtis, for all intents and purposes, should be a terrible character. You should not cheer for her at all, but you do, but you do because she has a sweetness to what she's mm-hmm. trying to do. And these are all criminals involved in the situation, exactly. Except for John Cleese, obviously he gets dragged into it, but he gets dragged into it for all the right reasons, and it ends up in a happy ending for them. But at the same time, you can't really empathize with Cleese. No, because, because he's cheating on his wife. Exactly. Yeah. And he turned real quick. Yes, he did. They met twice. Then by three, he was like, I'm ready to throw away my marriage. Yeah. Let's do this. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's also a comedy. But what, another thing I like about it is they focus on an aspect that usually the movie is about the heist and building up. And maybe right. there's some deception. And that's the third act of the film. Yeah. And this is all the deception. Yep. It's just like that the actual action of it is because that that is also part of what happens. If right. something goes awry, it just doesn't often come up. There there's a lot of good comedy to be had in there. Who knew? Yeah, and it, what's great is also like every single one of them has a moment where they you where you think that character is like a dumb character or not a good character or a stupid character or a lost character, but they have this steal every in these scenes mm-hmm. every once in a while and they surprise you so you don't so that the, they don't become stereotypical or caricatures. They actually have some complexity to them and it's interesting to watch them as they progress throughout the movie because even Michael Palin when he has you know he's pretty pretty much been beat up the whole movie gets progressively yeah. oh. worse <laughs> him with the dogs him with the dogs oh god it's great especially by the third one. Oh my god when he I because I, that's one of the spoilers that I don't want to get to you'll yeah, know true. it when you see it yeah, yeah, when yeah. he gets to the third dog it's just that one when that one happens and his reaction is the best <laughs> yeah it's the best <laughs> Yeah, it's a great comedy there. All right, uh, what's your number eight? Uh, my number eight is uh, Point Break. Ooh, uh, not on right. your list. Didn't make my list. It's fine. Because I because they, they, yeah. they just do robberies all the whole movie. So for me, it just didn't quite get there as one heist. So, yeah, but I true. get why it's on there. I get it. You know, it's true. Yeah, and at the same time, it's also usually a heist is they're going for a big job as opposed mm-hmm. to just self sustaining jobs. Like yep. technically, they're big for their world, yeah. but not in the context of a heist film. Normally, right. heist film is we're going after just such a vast sum of money that we can all go retire on a beach somewhere. Yeah. That's almost every, you know, robber's goal. Yeah. Let's get out of here and go to Buenos Aires or go to, you know, the Maldives or somewhere great. Yeah. As opposed to this dreary European or American Canadian, whatever climate that I'm accustomed to. Uh, But in point break, it just, I don't know. That's the other reality of heist films for me. They can be these smaller things. Mm-hmm. And what's the mentality of a group of guys that are just doing score to score to score? Right. Because it's a different animal. It's kind of like, uh, um, oh, shoot. The uh, Chris Pine movie with uh, 
that came out last year with Ben oh, Foster. Yeah, Hell or High Water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a series of, you know, bank robberies. Right, right. It's not quite. On this, I don't consider that a heist because right. on this, they're actually doing it and planning to get money to further a specific other goal. Yep, you're right. Um, Whereas Hell or High Water is just, I don't know, it's a couple guys that are... Yeah, they're just taking money to save their farm and to save to, their farm, to but make it's, a point. Yeah, it's political more... Political point, yeah. One guy is to make a point and the other is to try and save the farm. Yeah. I don't know. It's yeah. a weird distinction. I guess that could it could also fall under the It category. works, though. It does. Yeah. But anyway, point break. We've talked about it numerous times yeah. on this show. I guess to the new listeners, it's awesome. <laughs> if yes. you haven't seen it, I'm sure you have, though. It's one of those movies of, it's easy to get a, a young kid into that. Yeah. No matter their age. It's like, you get it. Yeah. This isn't asking a whole lot of you nope. intellectually. It's like, this is a very surface story. But it's awesome. It yeah, is and awesome. And it's a lot of fun to see Keanu, like, in prime Keanu. Like, just as he's coming into mm-hmm. his own, out of Bill and Ted, you get Gary Busey still somewhat employable. And then... Uh, but you get Swayze. Yeah, Swayze. Full, right when you're like... Full swagger, man. Yeah. yeah. This guy is going to be huge. Yep. He owns that part. I can't imagine any other actor pulling that part off, whereas nothing against Keanu. I'm sure there's a bunch of guys that could have done it. Probably. Yeah. Whereas he is Neo. Like yeah. He's done it in others. Just in that one, I think that was a character that could have been changed. Yep. Yep. Uh, with just about anybody, whereas Swayze is yeah. just pure Swayze. Yeah. If I could have gotten that Swayze for 10 years, I would have watched everything he did. <laughs> Except we get, you know, uh, Black Dog. Yeah. And we get, like, bad things after. He's just like, nah, this isn't you. Yeah. I know it is, but I don't know. Just not working. It's weird. Like right after Ghost, it seems like he started to kind of fall like, apart. Yeah, kind of pick a different subject and not be as employable. So it's weird. It's weird how the career goes. You would think Ghost would launch him in the superstar of him, and it actually kind of worked against him a little bit at, at times. Yeah, had to and be whatever his hit. choices thereafter. Like the first immediate couple of choices just yeah. weren't good. Yeah, I'd have to go and look at his IMDb to remember. Yeah. But I, I, it seems right. It feels right. So, but but the the movie is great. Like you're just, you're just going all over the place. It's a nonstop. It literally is a nonstop mm-hmm. action thrill ride from the beginning. From the moment the it end. stops, yeah, all yeah. the way through. And it makes you like you you wonder whose side is what, who's going to do what, and then of course leading all into that moment where you you know he makes the decision that he makes at the end. And Catherine Bigelow did a great job directing yeah. this movie, man. So you know it's it's such a fun fun film. And the remake is a piece of shit. So don't waste time on that. Yeah. Remake. Plus, it's rare that you're you're cheering for both sides. Yeah. At the end, you want both sides to be successful. Yep. Because you like the story of the FBI agent that nobody, the two that nobody believed in in the department. So right. they're struggling, like, screw you, we can show you this is something. And it's yeah. also you identify with Swayze and his crew, but mainly just Swayze. Yeah. The rest of them just see, like, hangers on to his vision. Right. Uh, he's the only one that has any kind of dedicated purpose, and everybody else is just there to have a good time. Yeah. Well, that's why he's the leader. Yeah. Yeah, right. That right, was your number eight? That was my eight. Okay, so my number 10, we said was Fish Call Wanda. Yep. So my number nine is The Italian Job. The okay, remake. not on my list. Oh, okay. I absolutely love this movie. And I know the original with Michael Caine. I know, you're just supposed to mow the bloody dolls off. Yeah, I get all that, and people like that original film. But it's tough for me to go back and watch the old Michael Caine movies. They don't resonate with me like... I, uh, it's a different time. Yeah, man. There's like, a couple that I do like, yeah. and I like a lot. Get Carter other- I liked. Or whatever it was, the, yeah, and, the and original. Yeah, like his charm and Alfie. Yes, Alfie's a great one. Yeah, yeah. but there are also a bunch of others who are just like, a, I, yeah, I don't know. I think if I think Michael Caine could do a much better job with it now. Yeah. If you just gave him something kind of like that storyline. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't blame him. I think it's also like the style they were going after yeah. and the pacing of the story and just certain things that now we've just progressed as an audience and we have other demands on films. Yeah, there's something about 70s British films that don't quite connect with me, you know. Uh, even even films that are set in the 70s in Britain sometimes like that uh I don't know, maybe it was eventually it was set in the craze or whatever like the remake, the one with uh, oh. Legend, I think it was what it was called with yeah, uh, Tom yeah, Hardy. Yeah. yeah. I went back and tried to watch that and I'm like, okay, this is a decent film and I like the story of the craze. I even saw the original one in the 80s, but like this one just, uh, I just didn't. So it's just something about that time that doesn't quite gravitate yeah. to me. Yeah. Sometimes just older films, the pacing. I, yeah. It's uh, my. Uh, we can explain off if you can hear car horn. I can tell you exactly who that <laughs> is. But there's no point right now. Okay. Uh, um, but yeah, but I, I enjoy the Italian. I, I like the remake a lot. I think a great use of the minis. Uh, Charlize Theron is fantastic. I mm-hmm. think Edward Norton is great coming into playing a villain. Playing which, a villain. Which playing was, an excellent villain. Yeah, which, which he hadn't done since. Uh, his what, primal pro- fear. Yeah, primal fear since he burst onto the scene. And you know Wahlberg is good in these films. You know when they use Wahlberg correctly in certain action films, yeah. he's an enjoyable guy to watch. And Jason Statham's in this thing, and so there's so much about it that's enjoyable. Donald Sutherland, the, mm-hmm. the twists and the turns and the heist that they're trying to. I mean, the whole heist with the armored car through the high through the road. I mean, just so fantastic. Yeah, they did and, an excellent job. Yeah, so to me, it's just enjoyable, and it's the reason it's this where it is on my list is because it's 
rewatchable like crazy for sure. me. Sure. For me. And so that's why I put it in a Yeah, mind. I like the film. It just never made it. If I'm going to watch a heist film, I'll watch something else. But right. it's a fun film. Yeah. Yeah. They did a good job. I, I, yeah. I also think it's better than the original. Yeah. At least for me. And those minis are answer. Um, all right. My number eight is what, what we punched from the Thomas Crown Affair. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I thought, you know, there's a couple spots. We said That's a couple fine. spots is punting. Yeah, so I don't care. This is a good, good food movie, man. It's it's out of nowhere. It's cool. It's just a cool it is. film, man. It has, uh, on this list, it has a, one of the best, in, in the discussion, the best sense of itself. Yeah. It knows from moment one to the final moment exactly who it is. And, and by that, I mean the cinematography, the choice of shots, the music, yeah. the lighting, like everything about it is they're setting a very specific tone and they maintain it the entire way and the characters fit it yeah. to such a degree it is a great heist. Yeah. It, the end with all the hats and mm -hmm. just the camouflage and instead of using guns or violence, he just uses his mind to outwit all these agents and whatnot. It is an excellent story. Yeah, Pierce Brosnan and Rene Russo, Dennis Leary. Yeah. Uh, it's just great and it has a, it has a very... Like normally you would you would criticize this romance. Oh, it's too quick. They don't have enough time. But it works within the movie. Listen, if you're a because, billionaire that looks like Pierce Brosnan, yeah, man, this is entirely believable. <laughs> That's right. It's a good. It point. is. I mean, dude's got a billion dollars minimum, <laughs> and he looks like Pierce Brosnan. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a hell of a combo. And, and this is one of those sequences. This is one of those movies, rather, that kind of influenced an event in my life. Like when I, I remember there was this girl I was interested in back in college, and I was like going back and forth whether I should ask her out or not. And then I saw this movie, and I like just felt so like cool after seeing the movie that I was oh, yeah. motivated to call her. I called away this awesome conversation. We dated for like a month and a half. Like it was just the motivation of mm -hmm. it was there from the it's movie. About how long the relationship lasted in the movie. It's right, it's right. From more than likely, <laughs> about a month and a half, maybe two. But it was great to like. It's, it was. It's, it's a cool movie to go back and revisit, and it still stands up. It still yeah. works. Still is slick. It's. I probably one of the best Renee Russo performances she did during her prime when she was doing a lot of, of films. And I thought Leary. This one. This is another great job by Leary in these kind of smaller parts in these films, which he had done for a while, like Demolition Man, all these kind of films yeah. that he was doing through. He was doing smaller parts, and Pierce is just fantastic. I know. He's the coolest motherfucker, dude. He is. Right? I wish his bonds were better. I know. It sucks. Because he has he has everything that I that you want in a bond. He's yeah. got the the suave, the smooth. I buy him when he's, you know, doing like just shooting the single pistol. It's yeah. hard to look like you're effective and menacing doing yeah. that. But it just for some reason, because he's so just just agile and quick and, and perfect as he like mm -hmm. wheels around. You believe like, bam, that's an assassin's bullet. This right. guy's good with just a handgun. Just the movies around it, I've never been a fan of. Yeah. And, you know, I was thinking about with Thomas Crown, uh, when we were describing him before. Basically, he's what Batman would be if he had gone evil. That's great. Handsome yeah. billionaire that decides instead to use his intellect for good, use it to, have, to create some mischief and have fun. Yeah. It's like he's a light joker. And, and, and even at no point do you feel that he's really in danger of anything happening to him, but it's because of his portrayal and you're okay with it. Like you don't normally with films like this, you're like, well, we have to feel like he's got some kind of arc or journey. But with him, hmm. the arc or journey is about the situation with Renee. It has nothing to do with his crime abilities or whatever. It's yeah. more about his situation with Renee and what he's willing to do for her and her for him. And exactly. Just, and you buy it and you dig it completely. A hundred percent. Yeah. And when he pulls a, you know, when he, oh man, <laughs> this is, I, I doubt they might be able to hear it just like ever so slightly. Okay. I doubt it'll come through because okay. we've had like blonde mowers going off that's before true. and you did, couldn't hear it. We, I think we ran the AC once. What? And you oh, couldn't hear it. That's great. So if it gets hot enough in here, folks, it is Southern California. Yeah. And, you know, in the middle in the, of the day. At the end, the worst, when the worst part of summer is starting. For <laughs> us, right. it's, it's August and September, oh. sometimes bleeds into October. Mm -hmm. And the worst is it'll go nice for a week or two. And then finally, the last week of October, it'll jump to above 100 for seven to 10 days. Yeah. It does it every year. It's the last gasp before it, it gets is. cold. Yeah. And then after that, it's just like, all right, I love living here. Yeah. It's awesome. It's perfect weather during the day, and then at night, it's just it's jeans, t-shirt, and a light coat. Yeah. It's just perfect. It's perfect. It'll last like that for a while. <laughs> right, what's your number seven? Uh, my number seven is uh, Dog Day Afternoon. Oh, okay. It didn't make my list. Okay. All right. I like it because it's a true story. Yeah. Uh, now, I don't know how much of it is true. Right. They do put it at the beginning, so I would assume, I guess, because... It's one of the first ones that I could think of where it's like, this is based on a true story. Starts with the title card. Now, I'd have to look it up and mm -hmm. to see if it, what the first instance of that was. But I got to assume, because now, 
like after Fargo and things like that, mm-hmm. people take liberty with that, and they it's part of the, kind of the artistic aspect of the movie. And other ones are like based on a true story, and it's like basically you got the character's name and the city they're from, and the rest <laughs> of this is just utter bullshit. Yeah, that's right. So I don't know where it is in the spectrum. I believe it's pretty close. Yeah. You can't know what they're saying in the bank unless you talk to all the tellers and whatnot. Right, Who knows right, if right. that happened? But I like it from that, and it just to see basically two idiots, three initially, but yeah. two idiots that are in way over their heads, way over their heads. Yeah, they just jumped into the deep end with a half-ass plan. Yeah, and the plan goes to shit pretty quick. And then from there, it just devolves exactly how you think it's going to end. Yeah. And that's, you know where it's going. And yet the journey to get there and to see the progression of the story and the characters and how they change over time, you can see the Stockholm syndrome with the tellers as they become to like, you know, identify with them, be like, they're not bad guys. They just got themselves into a situation. Right. But that's kind of besides the point. Mm -hmm. That's why we don't negotiate with terrorists. Once you do it with one, now they're all going to assume they can do that. So, hey, guess what? Bank robbers. This doesn't end well for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. We're more than happy, at least in movies, to to take you out yeah. at any given chance. Well, it's an interesting film, too, because of the premise of why he's performing the robbery. Yeah, for his gay lover's sex change. Right, Chris Sarandon, who, who by the way, makes it very clear in the movie that he never asked for him to do nope. this. He has no part in making him do this. So this is an, this is what's great about this film. And, and, and counter to what I said earlier, like I love the 70s American films so much more than any seven, of the 70s British films. And so this is a, one of these 70s American films that really pushes the boundaries of what was acceptable. I mean, this idea, like you, uh, I, would you see a film like this now where a guy is performing a heist to pay for the sex change? Sex. Of his, like it's, in 2017, we don't see plots like this. So this is really amazing in like the early 70s to see something like this. And this is Pacino right after, I think, right Right after Godfather, uh, so he's still riding that wave of, of, of popularity, and he chooses mm-hmm. to do a part like this. You know, John yeah. Cazale, who's fantastic in the film, who plays his like kind of unwitting friend in the movie. Not caring. really, though, but it's his friend that ultimately has the drive to finish the job that yeah. they promised yeah. one another. Which you didn't think he would have no. because he's so scared through the whole process. Yeah, but he's just now resigned him to the fate that he already agreed to. Yep. He was fighting it at first, and then, yeah, to see that dynamic shift, yeah, and you're like, oh, okay, you think one has the upper hand, and now technically by by morality, yeah, the other one now has the high ground. Right. And they're still inflicting a moral code on one another. Right. And what I love is like, so when Sarandon gets on the phone, yeah. and he's got the wall of cops behind him, and he starts to talk and whatnot, and one starts to crack up, the sergeant or whatever forces them all to shut, shut up. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's the FBI agent. I can't remember. Yeah. It's Charles Durning. I think it's Charles Durning who does it, yeah. And it's it's interesting because in that scene, of course, because, hey, listen, we need him right now to save those people, so shut up. Mm-hmm. But it's also a discussion to the audience at large yeah. of this this type of individual de- deserves just as much respect. And in a just a small little subtle gesture, yeah. you're like, oh, yes, there's still a person. I guess it is. That's another reason this movie couldn't get made yeah. for that scene. That'll get cut out immediately. Yeah. Just we can't have anybody looking bad like that. It, it, as opposed to showing intolerance to teach us what tolerance is, right. we just omit it. There, therefore, we don't see what that you know what the bad thing is. Yeah. So we're not helping each other grow as a goddamn society anymore. We're just whitewashing everything to protect feelings. Well, unfortunately, as adults, your feelings get hurt. It's called the fucking world. Yeah. <laughs> like grow up, asshole. I yeah. That is my. I, I'm that's turning our, into an old man. That's our third show. Grow up, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what a great time for a callback as I'm getting way too heavy. <laughs> that is our third show. Hey, Matt, shut up. There's four. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's such a, and it's, it's, um, it still holds up and it's a perfectly paced film. And you, you are caught on both sides of the spectrum, like you said, Matt, by the time the film ends. You're caught on both sides. Because Charles Durning does a great job of actually feeling connection with this guy and with Pacino. He can sense mm-hmm. that Pacino is kind of out of his element and out of his depth as it gets further along. And he, you know, there's almost a kind of like, there's almost a father-son relationship that develops uh, in that situation, which I really enjoy. And then he has that brother who's like, yep. you've got to finish this thing, which is so ironic considering that's Fredo and Michael Corleone. Yep. So yeah, it's such good. Yeah, great casting. Yeah. All right, what's your number six? Uh, my number six is the uh, the newest addition to the list. Ooh. And I think as time progresses, it'll probably start, it might inch higher. Wow. Just for rewatchability. Baby Drive. Wow, you put it in. Yep. Okay. It was that good. Fair. I think. It's going to be an interesting list. All let's right. save the discussion because it's spoiler filled. Okay. And. Why, we're not doing reviews of movies yet. Slow down, Matt. Yeah, but it's only two months old. Yeah, that's true. So and just I talk about bad. can you talk about vaguely about why you enjoy it? 
without going into spoilers? Well, it's like I said before, with Thomas Crown knowing what it is, Baby yeah. Driver does that even better. Yeah, Edgar Wright's so fantastic. Yeah, the film, yeah, just the music and the way they set the characters uh, from the moment you meet them. Yeah. It's, it just does an excellent job of uh, creating who they are by evoking just by their physical presence. Mm-hmm. You have an understanding of who they are by their mannerisms and how just subtle interactions between them. Yeah. It just did such a great job with the actors and with the script. And the movie is shot beautifully. There's tons of great like motion and tracking shots yeah. and these long continuous you know, uh, pieces. And, and, and there's, there's tremendous action. There's some of the best driving that you'll see in any movie period whatever it is because yeah. it's all believable it's like yeah 100 percent, someone hypothetically could do this yeah i think eventually you get into an accident if you're taking that many you know quick <laughs> cuts and whatnot where there's 50 of them every time you're doing this right but hypothetically this is entirely possible yeah and it was just such an excellent movie such an excellent movie i do have a couple problems with it okay but that's for a later that's day. every movie yeah what movie is perfect right so but I enjoy, and I I think this is a great uh, selection map because, and I, I didn't put it on because it felt more like a, a robbery type situation as opposed to heist film. Because, but I get it because it leads spacey. to one bass, one you're right because it's spacey, right? He has that makes sense. He these does. heists and just like we're doing this job you're on right. this date for this score. Yeah. So he's coming in with a plan. It's a different version of a heist as opposed to the group coming up with the scheme together. It's right. someone else, com- you know, coalescing this group. It's a good and point. Sending man. them out on jobs. It's a good point. And, yeah. and I think of the film as if you haven't seen it, you've got to watch it. Uh, I would only echo what Matt has said and add that the performances are great from everyone that gets in there. And some actors show up for just the first part of the movie and don't show up again. Yeah. And that's a great stuff. It really gives the at- the film atmosphere, the atmosphere that you want it to have. And because a film like this could easily be cheesy or maudlin or easily. St- stupid, but easily. it isn't. It's so, it's so earnest and and earned and heartfelt and really in a way that uh, surprises you Mm -hmm. in our cynic, even more super cynical world that we live in now, something like this, when it hits all the right notes, shows you that deep and down inside, we want to believe in these kinds of things. We want to enjoy these kinds of things. Plus that nobility of it all. It's an interesting take on the hero's journey. Yes. Because this isn't someone you're supposed to be identifying Mm -hmm. with. And it's got like, you know, if you know the progression of that as you're watching it, so I'm watching the movie and be like, all right, so this is when this is more than likely going to come. And even though it was like, it's like every movie, you have to do these formulas to tell a story in this amount of time. Right. It's unfortunate that you can't be more creative, but if you can only hold the audience's attention for so long, so you can't like, otherwise, you know, the, every once in a while you hear like a new world record for a longest movie, it's, yeah. you know, four and a half days long and be like, well, that's a great novel concept. <laughs> But no one in the world has ever, maybe five people will watch that in, ever. Yeah, in its entirety. Yeah. yeah, just sit down, start to finish, and yeah. just watch it. Just, It's impractical. That's a piece of performance art at that point. Right. It, and so even as it's going through that in the movie, it's just like I loved the choices throughout. Yeah. How the character and the story progresses is just like a beautifully done, and the pacing is amazing, and just it's an excellent film. Yeah. Uh, all right, so my number seven is uh, was that because that was your six, right? Yeah, yeah. So my number seven is Inside Man. Okay. Yeah, I love this movie. It's a good man. movie. Yeah, it's so good. Despite one of the rare Spike Lee movies that people don't talk about a lot, but yet it's great performances all around. Clive Owen, uh, Tuatha Edgia for uh, Jodie Foster. Jodie Foster, yeah. Uh, um, Christopher Plummer. Yeah. It just extends out, and of course Denzel, and it it's, extends out so far that it's it's such a incredibly interesting film to see mm-hmm. because it, it it zigs when it zags it zags when it zigs when you think it's going to zig and so to me those are the kinds of films that really do justice for me to watch and enjoy yeah. because it is a ba- it is a heist film in the sense that they go and steal this money from a pretty high powered bank true and then it's this whole investigation of why they're taking this money or why they're taking these this yeah. information and what the information is leading to what the information shows it goes even deeper and then you have Jody really doing a rare sexy villain type role like she's very sexy in the film in just this kind of like no nonsense very powerful way which sure. at least I enjoy like I like women who are in films who are sexy wear those tight business suits drives me insane when I watch that shit <laughs> there you go ladies I like to be dominated what can I tell you, uh, <laughs> you anyway, go, no. <laughs> there's show number five 
<laughs> I like to be That's dominated. Late night show, late night show. It's fine. We got 10 shows. There's 24 hours in a day. <laughs> oh, uh, anyway, so, but I, I enjoy it because it's, it's so complex and interesting and the interviews with the people that were in the bank, like all of that. So it's almost like a combined theater piece with a film. And I think that it's one of the rare Spike Lee films that to me, uh, showcases his true abilities fully as a filmmaker. Sure. And, and yeah, Do the Right Thing is great and She's Gotta Have It and all those other films are nice, but something like, or good rather, but something like this is I like, like yeah. it's a maturity. It's a mature this film. This and 25th Hour to me. 25th Hour, absolutely. Just like two spikes where, you know what, a lot of people don't talk about these, but I enjoyed them. Yeah. You did an excellent job. You took, you know, 25th is about a single, basically a single character, whereas this one is a more complex story that you right. intric intricately have to weave in and out. Yeah. And the cool part about it is, so the heist is like a good, like uh, we have Magic Castle here yeah. in town. You ever been? Yeah, once. A lot of fun. So basically it's the only comedy club equivalent for magicians in the world. It's the only magician club like that where they show up and they do shows. Right. Otherwise they got to go travel and do shows wherever magicians do shows. Yeah. When you see a good magic trick, it's so simple and it's amazing. And that's what this heist is. Yeah. It's like, it's such a simple idea. And you're almost like, how has nobody else ever thought of that? Right. It's a great right. idea. Yeah. It's just so simple and beautifully pulled off and be like, of course this worked. The moving parts in it were so few that it was so well thought out. Yeah. You know, you almost tip your cap to them. Yeah. And you're like, good job. Yeah. And, and um, what's so... The way it's shot, too, yeah. is so rare of Spike to create such clean images. Usually his images have a bit of haze to them or have like these brighter colors to them. This is more of a cleaner vibe. And so you get it all the way from the beginning from how uh, how how they're wearing the all whites, those all white, like whatever they... The like, painter yeah, outfits. Yeah, the painter outfits from the, the steel's really clean in the bank. Mm -hmm. When they do the interviews, the room is like in a... It's in this kind of dark but bright white that's in there, too. So it's just very interesting how it progresses through the whole film and Christopher Plummer plays one of these guys is like these very rich dudes like the Koch butters or whatever you want to say that has like yeah. information on them and so it extends out which I think is really brilliant and in the end it, it turns the detective into a supporter of the guy committing the crime with live Clive Owen so alright that was my number seven. Oh, sorry the phone every once in a while like we'll shut off the, yeah I have to put the security code in. okay so my number six is Reservoir Dogs we are punting Woo! <laughs> we are punting. All right, number five. My At friend. number five, uh, we may be a punt for you. Okay, Ocean's Eleven. Yes. Okay. Yes. I figured. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I don't know why you had to go guttural. What do you got at five? Uh, I have the town. Okay, that's my when I was talking about earlier. It's yeah. Similar to other movies I have yeah. on my list. That's where it's just like. I like this other one a okay. lot better. All right. That's fair. But I would counter that by saying they do plan it out. They have a crew. Oh, no. They I'm not saying that. I'm oh, not okay. saying it's not a heist. Okay. I, we'll get to it. Okay. Great. So then my number five. So I said the town. Yeah, town. The, I, I rewatched it again a couple of days ago. Dude, this film, for whatever reason, is my favorite Ben Affleck film. I know Gone Baby Gone is good. I know Argo would like what won the Oscar or whatever. But like... This film is Ben Affleck and his influence of Boston, like really played out sure. very powerfully. So I think Rebecca Hall is fantastic. I think she, I love her. I think she's one of the most beautiful women working today in, in film. And the, their chemistry is very believable. The film takes its time. We just need to get her in a business suit. And you are. Oh, she you is. Know, you're on a gravy train with biscuit wheels. You know what I mean? <laughs> Those lips are insane. But like, um. And 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 the relation with him and Jeremy Renner, like just the, just yeah. it's 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 you Matt da it wouldn't have worked as well with Matt Damon. There's something about Renner that is a fantastic X factor in the film. It's like it's like a cat dancing on uh, electric wires. That's what it feels like. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> you never know what is what sounds going to come out. Isn't it a chicken? Is it a chicken? I think it's a chicken. Well, for me, I, I see a from cat like old a state fairs and stuff, and you would electrify the ground. Oh, and really? Chickens would hop around. Oh, I believe okay. so. Maybe it is a uh, cat on a hot tin roof. I've seen that. Okay. But I'm just saying, for me, I have this image of a cat on, on electric wires. Hey, look, I so it's got like, it. and it's yeah, exactly. Bam, bam. yeah, exactly. It's just, I got it. It was a beautiful image. It's just like, is that a thing? I thought it was chicken. <laughs> and so, it's so, but it's so, it's so powerful, and 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 it doesn't pull any punches, and it goes after it, and and I saw the and I saw the extended cut, which is an extra like 15 minutes in the film. It doesn't take oh, away I haven't from the seen film that. Again. Yeah, it's really it goes deeper Where into do they the heists. Add? Uh, they add more uh, with Renner and uh, their conversation by the by the fence where they end up in the fight okay. there's more there there's more with Blake Lively there's more okay. uh, with uh, uh, John Hamm there's more with Titus Welliver there's more of that going on like the interactions having and there's a little more with Rebecca Hall 
and Ben Affleck as well, which sure. deepens their relationship. But it's but Affleck is so interesting as a character and the stuff with Chris Cooper as his dad like you hear it gets darker and the film gets darker and darker as it goes along because you find out what happened to his mom you find out why his dad didn't do what he should have done and you find out like there is a heart to this guy this whole it's it's that trope of like I'm gonna pull this one job then I'm out of here that yeah. actually turns the cliche or the trope on its head and it does it in such a powerful way and uh, I don't know. It's just it's a film that moves me every time I watch it, man. That's what yeah. I can it's, say. it's one of those. Uh, maybe I need to rewatch it again. I mm -hmm. saw you know saw it in the theater like everybody else. Right, right. And loved it. Walked out, and I think I've only seen it maybe once or possibly twice since then. I know mm. once for sure. It's it just hasn't hit the rewatchability for me. I, I appreciate that with I, other heist some, films. Some are, yeah. yeah, totally could. Yep. But this is one of those. This this was my like I said before. Yeah. I'll get to it. Okay. Uh, my number four. Yes. The Sting. Yeah, I had to leave that off. You son of a bitch! I know this is who. This is weird. What's happening? You know, I know. I like a just because I, I just don't go back and watch this one over and over again. Of the Redford, okay. Of the Redford and, and Newman ones, Butch Cassidy's the one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, you can't compare. Yeah, that's yeah. not fair. But that's I know you're right. But that's the way it is in my mind, which is sure. And I agree. I it's it. unfair, but that's why. But it's just like it's a, a good film. It's a great film. I like it for like the simplicity of of doing a title card. Mm -hmm. And setting up this next vignette of this is what this chunk of the story is about. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. here's this part of the setup, and here's this part of the setup, and it it, it just builds in a way that is utterly unique compared to every other film in here. Uh -huh. And it's hard to thread a story together where it's disjointed like that. It's yeah. almost because it's you know it's set in the Depression era, so it's kind of akin to a vaudeville show. On that, uh -huh. when they come out and like, here's the next show, and they give you a title card. Right. And this is what the next show is about, and they wheel it out. And also has the music, that ragtime ish yeah. uh, music, you know, playing throughout. And yes, the dynamic in the movie as a whole is not Butch Cassidy and Sundance is an utter and complete classic. Yeah. I agree with you. But I like them together so much that I think I've said this to you before. I'm envious of the people that got to experience that in real time because this is these movies I would have looked forward to. Yeah. When they were coming up to release, all like, oh, especially anything after Butch Cassidy and Sundance, even if they were rumored together, be right. like, please, please do anything. You guys are electric. I love it. I will watch you do whatever. Let's go watch paint dry together. You know what <laughs> I mean? I got no problem. Because for some reason the dynamic for you between the two of you is so good yeah. to me that I don't care what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, so th I, I found Butch Cassidy first and then watched this after. Right. Uh, and I, I like it more because of that. I had already fallen in love after one viewing of their dynamic. Yeah. And I was like, I'm watching, okay, what else did you guys do? Right. Um, so yeah, I, I just love, it's, it's a more interesting heist film to yeah. me. And I, and I respect it. And Matt, I get so much shit from my friends who are lovers of classic film for not being more in love with this film. I get shit for it all the time. And it's not that it's not a good film. It, if it comes on and I have nothing else to do, I might leave it on for a, few, for a little bit. But I it's, might. Yeah, but it's not I one. might. Or I might find anything else to do. <laughs> who knows? It could be either. If the town's on TNT, I don't know what to tell you. It's not like a contest. But like, but like, okay. But like, I, I get why people love the film. Like, I watched it and I was like, oh, this is actually cool. Robert Shaw is good in the film. Charles Durning, once again, yep. in the film. Really good stuff. And you're right. It does evoke that time effectively. I forget who the woman is in the film. I forget. But it. If uh, there's two. Oh, there are two? Okay. Well, there's the one uh, The Newman is staying at her place. Right. I, I can't remember. She was in a bunch of different stuff. But is that Eileen Brennan? Is that her? I'd have to look it okay, up. Okay, okay, okay. You could be 100% right. I know her. It's like, oh, I, that. Right. That woman. <laughs> and then the other one, I don't think I could place her again. It's who Redford hooks up with. Okay. That ends up being not who he thinks she is. Right. But it's a good film. Uh, Sting is a good. Oh, choice. it's an excellent. It's yeah. an excellent film. It's a good right. film. Shit, I don't know about any of that. What do you got at number four? <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, Inception. That's my number four. Yeah, didn't couldn't, make your list. Couldn't. Fascinating. And it, okay, so this is what we were talking okay. about before of sure, Butch sure. Cassidy versus. Okay. I've watched Interstellar a bunch of times. Really? You you a like Interstellar more bunch. than Inception? Yes. That's an interesting... Oh, wow, that's cool, man. I like that about Inception, it. I liked. Yeah. But it's just like, in that, they both exist kind of in the same space because they came out kind of close to each other. Yes, it's they did. sci-fi and... Yeah, one, two just, years. But Interstellar hits me on a bunch of different... I love space. I love yeah. science. Like, okay, what about this is real? Right. The, the, the music in it, mm. it's amazing. Now, I understand, uh, you know, Inception. Music yeah, is sure, iconic sure. as well. 
but in an interstellar, oh, yeah. yeah, when those organs come in and they're just building and it's got that uh, a little, I guess it would be an arpeggio on the higher notes mm-hmm. that's just going through that chord, but individually on the notes. And it just, it builds this tension. I, I just, I find that movie fascinating. I respect that completely. I, it's, well, I own both of them. Yeah. Uh, and Interstellar is an enjoy, it's, it's, it's a film I can only watch every few months because it really is a lot that it takes mm-hmm. you to enjoy. And, 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 and I, those moments, see, I'm not, I, to me, I'm fascinated by science. I'm not intelligent enough to get science. It's always one of my worst subjects. But I've, I'm fascinated when I see it on screen. Like, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, that scene where she go, they go down to the planet, come back, like, and it's, like, only, only been, like, an hour. And it's been yeah. 48 years for homie up there. And it's yeah. just all that kind of stuff. It's just, like, exactly. so amazing. Just that, because then that's the easiest way to represent the fact that, that you can have an effect on time given enough gravity. Yeah. That you can slow time down, whereas for other people, it moves faster. Because the faster you're going, the slower time is. Right. Just like all these complex ideas beautifully illustrated right here when you come back and you're like, oh my God, that's true. Yeah. That, <laughs> and you start thinking about that or like going into the wormhole. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then I've read uh, a couple of different scientists' breakdown of, I can't remember where I saw it, where they're just like, we, we advise them to take it even further to make it as accurate as possible, but it wouldn't be believable. Right. And you're like, oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. And it just, that on top of the story of man trying to, you know, basically finally uh, his reach, reaching his grasp yeah. as it, as opposed to exceeding and he can't quite get there, yeah. finally get that breakthrough. To, I just, yeah. I Inception agree. is awesome. Yeah. I mean, but Let's get back to it. Yeah. Inception for me, it's just, it's just, I think it's one of DiCaprio's best performances. I think it's the, uh, I think it may even be the top, in my opinion, of this period of time and him with him as I started with Aviator. It maybe ends here or a movie or two after. Uh, I just think there's something about the performance that he does here. Like he did uh, Shutter Island, all these, like mm-hmm. he's, like, is that that period? But I think this is the one where he really 100% nails it all the way through. And it's a great use of Ellen Page coming in and being like, you know, kind of the counter to him and making sure. him explore this. Tom Hardy is intelligible, which is always nice. Yeah. I mean, he's good. <laughs> And really cool in that situation. And Joseph Gordon Levitt. Joseph Gordon Levitt is gr- oh fantastic, which which became this like his calling card to be kind of like the sidekick, and then now he's he's pretty much a lead in the films that he does, and yeah. it's all this kind of stuff that really announced him. Uh, and then you have Killian Murphy, who rarely shows up in films now, but when he does, it's certainly interesting. I wish he would. Yeah, I wish he would. Yeah, people I, love him in Peaky Blinders. Yeah, and shit. I loved him from uh, Twenty Eight Days Later. That's right. the first time I ever saw him, and I was exactly. like, this guy's awesome. Yeah, just utterly like Tom Hanksian in Castaway where you're not saying a whole hell of a lot at long stretches and yet I can't take my eyes off of you I find you visually just compelling yeah and ever since then, so I that's I started watching P.E. Blinders once I heard he was going to be on it, yeah. and I managed to get copies of the BBC because I was like, I like anything he's on. What do right. you got? Right. Uh, there's nothing that that I've seen him in that I haven't enjoyed. Yeah, and, and, and Red Eye is a fantastic film yep. he does with Rachel McAdams. It's an unrecognized a, thriller. Yeah, a villainous so sound bitch. <laughs> He really on is. his own. He's got those eyes, man. Yeah, man. And they can turn from, you know, uh, uh, compassionate yeah. to devilish yeah. so quick. Just glassy-eyed devil. It is, yeah. yeah. It's it just is. The, the reflective shine is, <laughs> yeah, you know, he's in a specific percentile individual. He has extra shiny eyes. Yeah, but just like you just like you with the science stuff, for me, it's the mental shit. I love that. That, that to me, I understand. Mm-hmm. That's a language I can understand. So when you're seeing in the film, the the mental levels are going through into the into the sleep and into those different things. And like, what's the truth? What isn't the truth? What it, Like the fact that, we, you know, he spins the thing and it goes dark before you know if it falls or it doesn't. Like all of that, the all of that is just so good to me. It keeps me coming back to watch the film. It keeps me re-exploring and rediscovering and enjoying it so much more. And so that's why I put it as high as I did. It's it's just an eminently rewatchable film that I enjoy thoroughly. And, yeah. I, and I bought the heist because the heist is not a typical kind of heist. They're almost stealing his memories, you know, but they're stealing oh, it's documents, but they're stealing Well, yeah, but then it has too. tangible real world, yes. uh, you know, value to it. Yep. It's not just some, you know, abstract, esoteric kind of idea. It's right. like, no, this has some effect eventually once you get through the layer, through the layer, through the layer, and back to reality. Right. And at that point, what is reality? Yeah. By the end of it, it just, it does. It makes you question, it does the top, what happened? Yep. What happened? Yep. And then I like that it's just a question that goes unanswered, as yep. opposed to the way Sopranos ended. It's just like, well, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> at all. No. The top and just like, good, because I don't know how you end this movie. The totem, that's what it was. A totem, the totem, yeah. Right? Yeah, they use the totem, yeah. Yeah, that keeps him grounded. Yeah. Is it is it uh, Ken Watanabe and then and then uh, Marianne Cotillard? So just yep. a great cast all around. Uh, all right, what's your number three? 
Uh, my number three is Reservoir Dogs. Oh, okay. Let's do it. Yeah, it was close. <laughs> yeah, it's good. <laughs> it was close. <laughs> I don't like, I'm just I don't like your these, list. these East Coast John uh, reactions I'm getting today. I got the little bit <laughs> <laughs> kind of. <laughs> it was, I wish we had a visual for this because me just doing the laugh only sells half of it. Uh, yeah, I got I'm not res- judging you. I man. got Reservoir Dogs number three. Yeah, this is great. I I'm like happy that. it's on your list. Ha- are you happy it's on my list? Yeah, I don't know. You never. I never know with your list. Your list is always a, like it's just like my list. You never know with mine. So yeah, but so I never. I don't know that I ever attack you at your top three and be like, listen, I don't know if you're gonna have those types of movies. <laughs> I don't know how good your taste is. You're, I think you're inceptioning this. You're, uh, <laughs> you're, you're listen, I'm spinning minutes. this however I come out like the good guy, and you're free. the asshole that's attacking me. <laughs> anyway, I got Reservoir Dogs at three. <laughs> that's, I think that's everybody's job in life. Listen, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an angel. Yeah, that's right. Everybody else just needs to see the world from my perspective. <laughs> I'm the victim here. Exactly. Uh, yeah, g- great. Okay, so number three, Reservoir Dogs, Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> awesome movie. Yeah, man. Just the nonlinear, which... You know, he became it became a style unto himself, yeah, and other yeah. people trying to emulate it. Um, and to see it, to see the aftermath before the actual, you know, what takes place to provoke that aftermath. Mm-hmm. You just see the fallout, and then the story builds from the fallout. Yeah. To give you, it's like when you watch a TV show and they show you the penultimate scene at the start, and then give you the backtrack and give you all the rest. Yeah. That's that, at that point. Then, so when once they do the restart, it's a linear until we get to the scene you've already seen, and then we close out the last eight to ten minutes or whatever it is right. on what you don't know. And this is like that, but at the same time, it builds the complexity of the characters of why they're so antagonistic towards one another when yeah. we finally catch up with them. What befell them? What are the interactions that created uh, or the actions or whatever took place that sent them down this path? Mm-hmm. And it's, I mean, it's just so excellent. I love the choosing of just uh, color names for yeah. the characters itself because I'm going to forget, you know, hey, that's Ted. And there's Ray and there's Steve, whereas Mr. Pink, Mr. White, the conversation of why am I Mr. Pink, the no tipping, yeah. who didn't fucking tip. Yeah. It's just just from that one little scene, you get an idea of who everybody is. Mm-hmm. And Tim Roth is the first one that gives him up. Yeah. When he's like, who didn't tim- uh, tip? Tim Roth, boom, instantly. Yeah. There was him just belying who he is. Right. And unfortunately, spoiler alert, but this thing's, you know. 25 years oh, old. Fu- uh, come on, seriously. 28 yeah. years old. Yeah, I know. Please. I, uh, you know. I, I get that we have young listeners, but there's there's a there's a line. There's a limit. I know. I still still feel bad. Oh, okay. On some level. Feel, Not really. Feel free, feel free. That level is so low. It's yeah. the easiest hurdle I've had to clear all day. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's a 25-something-year-old movie. Yeah. 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 If you're only 14 years old, I apologize. I guess. But at the same time, I, I can't. Otherwise, this show is, uh, hey, Ten, I had this. It was great. What'd you have? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Why we're just well, reading listening. names to each other, and the show's over in three minutes. Or vague terms. I really enjoy the cinematography. Yeah, That's well, it. it's what I do with Baby Driver. And oh, yeah. when the guy does the was thing. Was that enjoyable to you guys? See? So yeah, stop giving fun. a shit for spoilers. Yeah, well, that's a new movie. So that one, I'll give you. <sighs> yeah, all right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. But the Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, Reservoir Dogs. But look, and also, like, it was an announcement of, of a new force in movies in mm-hmm. Tarantino. Like you mentioned, the diner scene at the beginning, that's that's phenomenal writing. And that you're seeing that is going to be his calling card throughout. Yes, the 70s influence. Yes, the exploitation stuff. Sure. Yes, yes the, the pushing boundaries of like, you know, yeah. all that kind of stuff. But it's the writing that is the number one exactly. thing about We're all Tarantino a product films. of our influences. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And, but the, the what he does in that film and, and making you uh, really get invested in these two guys as the film progresses, as the film goes forward, and then decorates each character with their incre- like incredibly interesting backstory and references that like you, some people are going to get, some people got to sure. research, all of that. The film doesn't come to you. It makes you come to it. And I think that's... From the start. Yeah, from the start. And that's what's so great about this movie. It's ballsy enough for a debut film mm-hmm. to make the audience, to know that it knows more than the audience. It knows better than... It's an experienced film. It is. The confidence. Have to come to. Yeah, the confidence. Exactly. You can feel yeah. it. Yep. It never wavers. It's just like, it is a bold punch to the face. Yeah. Just like, I know what I'm here to do, so just shut up, sit there, and enjoy yourself. Because yeah, exactly. that's exactly what you're going to do. Yeah. And and damn if we don't. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't doesn't even matter. Okay, this wasn't the movie for you. Move along. Yeah. I don't care. And a great cast for a first-time film. I mean, An Harvey excellent Keitel, cast. Tim Roth. Uh, uh, Michael Madsen. Michael Madsen, Steve yeah. Buscemi. Yeah, Buscemi. Uh, great stuff um, Buscemi. 
Oh, sh- Chris not, Penn. Chris Penn. That's right. what was like. Right. Oh shit! What is Dead Penn's name? Lawrence Tierney, who'd been a, a, a an Eddie Bunker, who'd both had been in a number of like old school seventies and sixties films that dealt with these kinds of sub stuff. So it was great to have them all. And Stephen right. Wright doing that voiceover as on the, the DJ radio on the radio, which is so good, just perfect. <laughs> Super sounds of the seventies. That right, was your you, number. That was my three. Oh, so my three is uh, the Usual Suspects. All right, that's my number two. Okay, right, Brian Singer. Perfect time to talk about. Good God, man! What a film, dude! Mm-hmm. Uh, it's still, still, it's a 1995 film or 96 film, and it's still powerful as hell. It's almost oh, over two decades later, still affects you. Still great work, still great writing. And Kevin Spacey, what a day! De- what a film debut! Like yeah. a film debut. I know he'd been in Glen Gary. An announcement. Yeah, but it's an announcement. Yeah, a Absolutely. guy that can like trust me. You want to? This guy has talent. Yeah, this it has true, genuine talent. All of them. Yeah. Benicio del Toro. Yeah, just it should be a throwaway character, and he comes in with that, that accent that is so thick at times, but it's such a great character. Yeah, and Kevin Pollock is, Pollock great. is great, and uh, uh, Baldwin. Yep, you got a good performance out of Stephen Baldwin. That yeah. speaks volumes about it your does. film. He's he, in no way uh, he's just as good as any of uh, the yeah. rest of them. Yeah, Gabriel they're all excellent. Gabriel Byrne. Yeah, and Pete Postlewaite again. I mean, it was. It's such an excellent movie. It became a cultural like touchstone, yeah. and we all knew the twist and would use that. You'd see it in, you know, anything from comedy sketches to uh, references within other movies. Yeah. To I mean, just nonstop. You uh, probably eventually could have seen it like on news reports, and the, you know, he was like a kind of Kaiser Sose, right? And everybody would understand. Oh, it's this type of individual, uh, and it's so rare for a movie to do that, and it does it in such a way that. With the twist at the end, yeah, it's so good. You're like, what, what the, what the fuck are the rest of you guys doing? You know what I mean? <laughs> this is how it's done yeah. right here. As opposed to Shyamalan saying it took him six drafts to figure out that it, the twist in si- six cents. Oh, really? It took him like six drafts or something. Oh, like that. Wow. And so on the seventh draft or whatever the case is, he finally yeah. figured out the twist. It clicked. And you're like, I can't imagine what the movie was before that. Right. Whereas this was set up from the moment. This is what the twist is going to be, and they earn it, man. Yeah. They build it so beautifully, and all the little vignette stories yes. as they tell, like try and decipher who Kaiser Sose is, and build up the lore of Kaiser Sose, right. and just creating this devil, and to see the house of cards come crumbling down. Yeah. Oh my God. Paul Monteri's reaction at yeah. the end when he realizes what who, what who, happened. Yeah. What and then happened. seeing Spacey on the sidewalk. Oh. When yeah. we like you just pan down at his feet as he's walking and the reveal there oh, oh man yeah and, Just, all, and all of it like it, uh all of the because i think they're brought together they're not a seasoned crew that have worked a number of I can't, heists no. before no he's, kaiser brings them all together because they all serve a certain purpose and they all owe him in some way so he's going to make them pay for whatever things that they did before mm-hmm. in in different jobs and so he's bringing them all together has the whole situation going on and then has them stuck in the situation because Pete Bosworth is the lawyer is like they have uh, I forget the actress's name uh, they have uh, Gabriel Burns girlfriend who is in Titanic the redhead I forget which but they have her there oh, yeah, so yeah, it yeah. keeps him f- being the leader of the team and yeah. has to get it done and at some point you think that Gabriel is Kaiser so so it's so brilliant how you how it makes it tricks you all the way through and you're with Giancarlo Esposito as the cop on the ground yeah. versus Palmentary who's the co- who's the detective in the room so you've got that juxtaposition going on the mm-hmm. whole time and it's just, and when the reveal happens you're just like holy shit so earned yeah so deserved yeah just like it was beautiful how you guys eventually got to it and once the pivot happens the fact that it's just like and scene yes yes and it just it's perfect. I don't need to go further. Nope. And I love that there's never been any talk of let's do a Kaiser Sose movie. Fuck yeah. No sequel, no prequel, no, don't none need of that it. bullshit. It just kills the mystique of Absolutely. this character. Yep. Why do it? And I wonder how much Singer has a say in that it says, Nope, I won't do it. I wonder. Well, was it written by him? Oh, good point. I don't know. If it was, I then like he'd was. have more say. He's just right. like, I'm not gonna write another one. Right. And you don't have the rights to the first one. Well, so there you go. Maybe. Unless it was written by somebody else. Yeah, I don't want to know that that's true. Yeah, neither do I. I want to believe that he did it. And that's that way right. he just yeah. can... Let it be that. Yeah. <laughs> Don't destroy this thing I love, you assholes. <laughs> hey, that's number six. That's the six show. That's Don't destroy six. Thing yeah. I that's beautiful. And then we get fans on. Hey, they're remaking this. I hate this. That's gorgeous right there. <laughs> you just got to live in the Los Angeles area or be willing to fly in. That's we, a brilliant... I mean, every week, a new fan. Don't yeah, destroy we can't, this thing we I can't love. pay for your flight to your hotels nope. if you want to get here. But if you're going on the show, you come on the show. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, what's your number? There's a two? lot of I like that our titles are a bunch of that. Hey, uh, blah 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 blah. Well, sure. Usually the show titles are just like titles, just yeah. one word to get stick it in ours. Are like hey, it's a description of the show. <laughs> We're a fledgling new uh, network. That's you know? right. We got to break the rules. Exactly. Give us a little time here, assholes. <laughs> what's your number two? That was my two. That was your two. Yeah. Oh, my number two is Heat. All right, that's my number one. Woo! So you're you're telling me oceans is better than heat? Ah, uh, yes. All right. Well, we'll get to it. We'll All talk, right. We'll have a we'll talk heat right now. Jen Kempe, get ready to figure out who's going to concede to who on this situation. But yeah, uh, whatever the case is. Yeah. All right. Heat. Heat. What a goddamn fantastic. The best film. heist movie of all. Time. <laughs> I believe that was the tagline when the movie came out. And Gene Shally came out of retirement and was like, I support that. That's a great movie. Best yeah. nice movie ever. I can't do a Gene Shally. Oh, dude. Who nobody can. He's so yeah. good. Well, uh, I better get on it, you know? Michael Mann, I dude, I you know, when he's on what it. What can you say? Yeah, when he's on it, he's on it. And this is one of those that he's on it. Kilmer is great. De Niro just before Kilmer does the slide into uh, into whatever he's in now. De Niro at one mm -hmm. of the last gasps as this kind of like hard ass fucking thing that he's played numerous times. Yeah, Pacino's great as the cop who won't stop, even though he's a moments he's a caricature. It still works. And then you know you have all the stuff going on with Tom Sizemore, also Dennis Haysbert, like all this, all and Denny Trejo, fucking Trejo, Trejo, he's so he, good. Henry Rollins, Rollins, yeah, is good in this. Yeah, man, say that to yourself again. <laughs> Henry Rollins. Is good in this, and it's nothing against Henry Rollins. Yeah. Just what else have you acted in? Yeah, there's. A, I can't. I was like sitting here thinking mentally about any other film yeah, he might have been in. And I don't remember. He's anything. done something else. Yeah, there's sure no way he didn't. I'm sure he has. But at but the same time, is a guy with such a limited body of work, and you're like, yeah, he's yeah. awesome in it. The whole movie is great. It's based on something that happened here in Los Angeles, right? The shootout in what North Hollywood? Yeah, North Hollywood, the bank shootout. Yeah, yeah. Just this crazy guy's got assault rifles, and they're you know running through the streets and firing off at police, and. Yeah. This happened. Now, they said it, what, in the downtown area? Right. As opposed to, which is a more dramatic scene. I think it was scene. in the valley. The, the, oh, was it in the yeah, valley? The North Hollywood, the, 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 yeah, the, the true story. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm talking about the, the movie. But the movie's in downtown. Yeah, yeah, yeah they said in downtown. Yeah. Just a, it's a better visual yeah. as opposed to North Hollywood. Yeah. Because uh, North Hollywood is just part of Los Angeles. And it was sprawl. only one, one guy. It was opposed to Heat is like. Oh, I a thought it was a couple. Crew. For oh, some well, reason, maybe may been two, but it isn't like a crew. Like yeah, yeah, no, this is, is yeah, I this is a planned it. heist. Yeah, and they have it going in. They're going in on this specific day because that's when this, you know, it's like twenty six million dollars or something. I can't yeah, remember the number, yeah, yeah. but it's just a ton of cash. Yeah, they got the huge duffel bags, and that's when you see, oh yeah, like that type of cash to carry around. It sounds great, but yeah. it's huge, bulky, and heavy. Yeah, and without even saying it, it feels like the last run for this crew it yeah. feels like it nobody says like this is my last job blah, blah, blah. but like uh, Kilmer's marriage is falling apart with Ashley Judd you know uh, De Niro looks like he wants to, to leave De Niro with doesn't Brennan. want to take this job no he doesn't want to take the job initially right yeah. Right. but because Kilmer's in, in the what, situation uh, that he's in Voight has to talk him into yeah, it yep, he, yeah he's the guy that and comes Kilmer up too. with the jobs yeah yeah and uh, oh, Voight's great God, he's so good in this movie yeah. too man across the board yeah. there's not one who's the the, the woman on she was like, I think on Chasing Amy. Amy Brenneman, yeah. Amy, okay. She plays his, uh, De Niro's like, love interest. In the and then you have Diane. Not Chasing Amy. What was that CBS TV show that she was Judging Amy. Judging Amy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Venora, Amy. Diane Venora plays uh, the Pacino's wife in the movie. Oh, know? yeah. And right. then the daughter that's all screwed up it's because of yeah, the, the divorce. Yeah, that's Portman. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's layered with a shit ton of great actors all through it. And it never loses the grittiness and the, the just the dirtiness of the fucking film. It's, no. it's scary from beginning to end in terms of like, you never know what's going to happen. There's some incredibly tense moments. And when the shootout happens, holy fuck nuts, man. And the best part is, is and Wayne Grove, fucking Wayne Grove, Wayne Grove. God damn it. Wayne fucking Grove. it all up. That fucking psychotic son of a bitch. Every time he's in anything, I, I just go fucking Wayne Grove. I know. <laughs> and he, he could be playing the nicest guy in the world. And I just don't trust him. Not at all. He's just done that in movies so much, but he did it in this one so well. If he ever cures cancer, I'm still going to yell at the TV. Yeah. Fucking Wayne Grove. Fucking Wayne Grove. <laughs> anyway, what were you going to say? I'm sorry, man. He's like Bill Lambeer to me. I'm not like <laughs> Bill Lambeer at all. At all. It's the same. That's the Wayne Grove of the NBA for I think me. that's a very good comparison. Oh, I like that, dude. <laughs> um, but anyway, the, the intellect of both sides, because the yeah. police are casing them. And and once the crew figures it out and they do the flip and yeah. now they've cased the police and then Pacino with the snapping figures it out. Yeah. We've basically just been made. Yes. And they, 
then it's his respect of these guys are good. Yeah. They're not to be trifled with. And that sets up the stakes for when him and Pacino, uh, De Niro and Pacino, yeah. face off mm-hmm. at the diner and they just sit down. And it's a great, like, I respect you. And hey, I respect you too. But right. it's just that, the, you know, when it comes down to it, yeah. if you're in my way, you're an obstacle and I will take you out. And you're like, Brother. yeah. Yeah, I love that. And then he says, if it becomes you, if it's between you yeah. and you, some poor wife, you're going to turn into a widow. Brother. That ain't no decision, you know? And I was like, I love the, you're right, Matt. They just, they understand what their lines are and they both know this is a game to the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, either way, you know? And one side is going to win. Right. And it is, and the ending is good. Like it's not a, it's not a, a, a anticlimactic no. uh, uh, confrontation, well, which is fantastic. Because they set it up to where both endings are possible. Yes. So when they made the choice for one, it's, it's just as, as realistic as the other. Right. And the way that it happens, it unfolds. Yeah. You're like, yep, I buy. This is a perfect way to finish this. Uh, and then, you know, life moves on afterwards. Yep. yep. That's the cruelty of life. This pivotal yeah. thing happens to a bunch of people, and then eh, most people do not care. Yeah. When they just released a new remastered version, which a bunch of new special features on Amazon. It's like seven eighty eight on $7.88. I think on that one across it. the top, in like huge letters, it does say best heist movie of all time. <laughs> It's like really big and that uh, metallic ink undertone. So it, it flashes at you no matter what light you're in. It's kind of like the 3D face that will follow you in the room wherever you're at. It does that. It's impressive technology as you see it. <laughs> anyway, so we know you're number one. Well, yes, we do. Uh, uh, do we need to, I mean, it's Ocean's Eleven for God's sake. It is Ocean's Soderbergh's Eleven. masterpiece, Ocean's Eleven. What an actual heist film is. It is a remake, which is funny. I have three remakes on my list. I didn't even think about that. Thomas Crown Affair, Italian Job, and Ocean's Eleven. So this is interesting to me. Uh, for me, I, I, it just occurred to me now. And so Ocean's I did The Sinatra film is boring as fuck. I love Sinatra. I yeah. worship at the altar of Sinatra. But that film is boring as fuck. Great I, concept. Yes. Terrible execution. And the execution was done so much better in the Soderbergh film. Great actors well, all around. <laughs> fun actors all around. Supposedly, at that time, Sinatra said basically everything was one take. Yeah. Because you're only paying me for one movie mm-hmm. <laughs> you're like what that doesn't make a lick of fucking sense that's really humorous, you don't man. care how you come off you're like i'm always good baby yeah and just like boom beautiful take <laughs> that's right frank just a bunch of you yes tell men frank. Yeah, exactly. like, yeah. sick of fans all hovering around the set steven Eady. yeah tell him frank yeah, yeah, exactly. i love that like, sketch <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, I just I, I you know Clooney. This is this is like prime Clooney, man. Right when he's mm-hmm. stepped away from the Batman bullshit, he survived all that crap, and he's like really coming into his own as this like Cary Grantish kind of leading man. Oh yeah, Brad Pitt is is there as a great like Brad Pitt had yeah. no no reason to take a second banana to, to only Clooney, only because he's friends with Clooney exactly. And Clooney's the what makes works. this. He's the straw that stirs the drink exactly because he's the one that got everybody on board. Right, hey, hey Matt. Why don't you come have yeah, fun? Yeah, Damon, this? come in. Hey, you know, uh, uh, Bernie Mac, Casey Affleck, hey, Casey Affleck and yeah. uh, what's his name? Uh, Scott Con. Scott Con. Right. Let's say Hawaii Five O guy. <laughs> the yeah. two white actors they decided to stay with, and yeah. next the two Asian ones. <laughs> Sons of bitches. Show based in Hawaii. Right. Smart move, guys. Fuck them. Smart man. move. That's, That's like doing bullshit. the inverse and going to Minnesota and just having only Asian cops. Yeah. You're like fucking Scott Con. Who the fuck do you think you're? You're Scott Con. Yeah. Anyway, uh, and then and you know, went around Carl Reiner, Elliot Gould, uh, Don Cheadle, just great, great actors all through this whole film. And of course, Elliot Gould had his pedigree doing some of these seventies type films, you know, mm-hmm. the same kind of heist films as well, you know. And so, this is such a great combination. And it, and you have Andy Garcia as the foil. You have Julie Roberts as the you know, Ocean's Thirteen to me is the more rewatchable of the two. Because, okay. because I've lived with these characters that I enjoy their camaraderie now. I don't need the background. Whereas Ocean's Eleven gives you the origin story of this crew, this heist, and everything happens. And Garcia, just the whole thing with Garcia is just brilliant, brilliant. And Pacino being like a rare, getting one-upped rarely in a film, is well, in not, Ocean's 13. That's yeah, I was about to say, it's, yeah. like, it's not in Ocean's 11. That's why it keeps me, that's why I love yeah. Thirst. There's, there's a lot of it too, well, but you, Ocean's 11 is the one. You made it through the war of two. Yeah, oh God damn. And two got out to the other sucks. side. Oh yeah, two's terrible. I saw two once and I tried to watch it again. Maybe like, I was like, well, maybe I can explain this to my, and I was like, fuck, I quit within 30 minutes watching it again. I was like, this is, you guys are just bullshitting. Here yeah, oh, it's lazy. This is just a cash grab. Yeah, absolutely. This is, hey, we'll fly you to this place and you can live here in you know, five star hotel for the next six six weeks. Yeah. Eight weeks as we shoot this. Yeah. Like, okay. It just seems so lazy. Yeah. Man. Compared to the fun and inventiveness of the first one. Yeah. Of taking something and spinning gold out of hay. Mm-hmm. You had such a terrible source material. Great concept. Uh 
Yeah, I like the third one, but I think I've seen the first one more. Yeah. I think I, I've seen 11 more just uh, over the years. It just popped up more. Right. So I have more of a connection to that. I it's love a, three too. It's, it's, it's excellent. It's, it's a believable heist. Like it's a believable heist. The way they set it up, because he's got the connections. The way he's got the the uh, the alternate. Like the way they practice out the heist. They put it on video. Like all the stuff that they're doing is just really interesting in the yeah. first one. And so and and they they give you time. It's really. I mean, it's eleven people, and they give you enough time with each of them to for you to connect to them as an audience. Oh, and yeah. Build up their relationship. You know and. Uh, Carl Reiner does just great work at playing that the old guy and all this kind of stuff. And then, oh, across the board, with, and Gould uh, is great too. Cheadle and Bernie yeah, Mac. Yeah, Bernie is great. Yeah, and excellent casting just across the board. And you're yeah. right; the, every you do know every character by the end of it. And like Thomas Crown, it's fucking cool, man. It's it is a cool film, dude. All well, the way I mean, from beginning to end. When you're uh, three top actors, yeah. but especially top two are George Clooney and Brad Pitt. I think cool is going to be pretty easy because <laughs> they're not going super serious. So, yeah, you know what else these two guys probably do really well? Yeah. Is be cool. Yeah, that's true. Because there's, you know, there's a reason they're huge stars. Yeah. We all agree these guys are pretty cool. So, and I love the dumb backstory. Like he's teaching Topher Grace poker. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, that's all that Needless dumb. Hollywood cameo. That's yeah, great. Just the four of them at a table and Topher's <laughs> acting all big shot. And oh. He's just getting, you know, oh, it's great. It's just brilliant. And then, and then when the heist happens, you're just like all the twists and turns that happen with it are so great. And when he gets the best of Garcia, it's just such a great scene between them. Just mm -hmm. a, and then with Julia too. And then, you know, unfortunately, you know, they kind of, uh, you know, as the, as the, the, the 12 is just terrible. And I like that they removed uh, Julia and Zeta Jones, nothing against them as actors or actors. No, it just didn't not work. not necessary for what they, they're doing in 13. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It just didn't work as well. Exactly. And it's nothing against them. It just, no. you guys came in with energy. Yeah. And they came in with uh, nothing. Yeah. I, I don't go to see Ocean's films to see your girlfriends or your wives. I go to see them, right? Yeah. That's Make what Make them part of the scheme. Right. Or get them out. Exactly. And just like when the, the female version that's coming out, uh, uh, I, th I forget what the like Ocean's Eight or whatever they're yeah, calling it. Yeah, I think it. it's Ocean's Eight. Yeah, I'm going to see them. I'm not going yeah. to see their husbands or no. their boyfriends. I'm going I to see them. I hope they don't have that. Yeah, exactly. I don't need it. The, don't need it. This movie is not about that. It's about the relationship of all of you as you're trying to do this heist. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If there are guys in the story that are on the crew or right. chasing you or whatever, sure, sure, hundred percent. But yeah. I don't need to see. It doesn't need it yeah. unless you're going super serious and now we need stakes. But you're not. So yeah. why do it? Why do it? Exactly. You don't need it. All right. Let's hash this motherfucker. There it is. Well, hash this motherfucker out. The thing is, though, I know, I know. the rules of the game have been established. Know. Well, do we want to mention honorable mentions or after we do the list? Uh, I don't care. You seem people, like you want to do it now. Go for it. Uh, no, no, let's do it after we do the list. All right. So that's fine. I know you want to do. I know heat. I know it's all right. You're two, my one. I'm not pulling an asshole. My ten should. I mean, you know, my ten should be number three or something. We both agree that's. You know, it's in the discussion for the best ever. I think you knew I was going to put Heat one, so you purposely put Ocean's Eleven farther down your list. Um, you no, crafty. I figured you'd have like Heat that. with me, and I figured Ocean's would be your number two. Oh, okay. That was my guess. Okay. Who's judging whose list now? Who's no, being just hoity. guessing. I've known you long enough. I, you know, be like, all right. I have a general vague sense of your taste. I've moves. changed. I figured the Sting would be on there, and then after six through ten, I didn't think we'd have any hits. All right. We had two. Well, we did. Yeah. yeah. All right, so then, uh, right, so Heat, Ocean's Eleven. What do you have next? You, uh, usual I, Suspects. I have Usual Suspects. So we can put that at three. All right. Who's, who's doing the banging, by the way? I don't know. Let's get through the list. Okay. <laughs> and then, you know, we got, we got something on plate. What's your number four? Uh, well, my next is Reservoir, but we don't have, unless are you saying Usual is three? Usual is three. Okay. You just put that in there. My number three. All right. Well, I mean, it seems like huh? yeah. That's two and three for us. And uh, for who? What? <laughs> All right, I wrote it down wrong. Did you? Uh, yeah, I'll give you that too. Who, who did you have? What, did you have something else at three? I thought we were talking usual at two, and then oceans would be three. Are you fucking nuts? No, oceans is whoa, whoa, if it's my whoa, number whoa, one. Whoa, it whoa. It's oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> that's that's what I said. It was my mistake. And I was correcting the mistake on my paper, and I'm, now I'm getting chastised for not correcting my mistake. Actually, preventing my mistake before it uh, happened. Hence, thereby negating its definition as a mistake. Don't you use $10 words on me, with me, son. I'm just, <laughs> just saying. Hence We've thereby. established blame. We're moving on. Furthermore. Reservoir is my next. Um, at three. Damn. What do you okay. have next? I have usual. I have, no, I'm sorry. I have, the, I have Inception at four. 
Not on my list. Right. But I have Reservoir at six. So by the terms of our show. <laughs> but uh, I still I love get that. It's a, you know, I still... I, I'm not sure what era that is, but <laughs> by the terms of this agreement. <laughs> All right. An old Victorian court. This parchment. <laughs> exactly. This papyrus. Uh, Are you willing to recognize the claims of the McGregor clan? The McGregor clan? Those claims were lies when you wrote them. <laughs> that's the even worse Scottish. Is that Braveheart? Is that Braveheart? Yeah, yeah. that's even worse Scottish. I didn't even clan. put any effort into that whatsoever. You've got to put. You've got to put. Uh, you've got to put water in your mouth. That's at the back of your throat. <laughs> is that the yeah. trick? I didn't yeah. know that. That's what uh, acting, <laughs> voice acting. Clun. You've got clun. Clun. You've got to put it all back there. Yeah, but I have to. It's such a uh, like a process for me to try and replicate that. Oh. Whereas it doesn't come off fast enough to mimic gotcha. the scene. Yeah. You know, I'm not good. I'm a mimicking son of a bitch. Uh, what do uh, you got next? So uh, you got Inception. Inception's next, basically. And then I got Stings. We both don't have... All okay. right, so I'll give you Inception there. Okay. You'll give me. I love that. Well, when you know when I say you that... You want it there? When I say that, you go, oh. Yeah, I'm saying you want it there? That's I'll right. give it to you there. No, you're not going to give it to me. It deserves to be there. <laughs> that's, a, that's a difference of opinion. That's semantics. <laughs> that's, man, that's all now. it is. So then Sting next? Yeah, the Sting next. Next, That's fine. Um, what do you have next? Uh, well, the commonality we have left: oh. Fish Called and Thomas. Right. Uh, it seems so. What they we should have now? higher placement. You think because they're yeah. common? Yeah. All right. So Thomas Crown Affair next. What do you have that at? At uh, eight. Okay. And fine. I fish at ten, so okay. I feel like that works. That's fine. So Thomas and then fish. Yep. Okay. The fish. Um, All right. Will you give me Baby at nine? Baby Driver. Oh uh, yeah. Will you give me the town at 10? Done. Okay. And that's the one that's like, I've already seen heat. Yes. So the town to me is... Oh, I see what you're saying. Heatish. Oh. And it's just like, you're good, but I got... I know. I'm not saying I'm right. I disagree with you completely. But well, right. then I am saying I'm right. <laughs> Shut up. I was fine until my opinion was insulted. And now, <laughs> what did you have left on your list? I, I am, forget. Uh, I mean, so what I was saying before, if you want to go like really obtuse with the definition... If yeah. some asshole No, no, no. Here, I don't mean on your honorable mentions. I oh. mean, what do you? What did we leave off? Well, that's 10. We're done. Yeah, what did well, we what leave, did we off, leave off? off? Yeah, yeah, off your list. Uh, dog Day and Point Break. Oh, so those are not bad omissions. Would you? I lost Inside Man, which is a really bad omission, and uh, The Italian Job. Yeah. We, All right. We both lost two. Yeah, we both lost two. All right, fine. There you go, Jen Kempe. All right, go ahead. Anyway, Obtuse and uh, Goodfellas. Oh, yeah. Because I can see some people saying the Lufthansa heist. Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a heist. I considered it, but I'm like, the heist is not the point of the movie. Yeah. Right? And like, this, one of my friends was trying to convince me of Die Hard. Yeah, that's the one that I... Yeah. Like, yeah it is a heist film, but it's, it's not, not told from their point of view. Exactly. So It's, it's not, not a heist film. Yeah. It's a John McClane film that yeah. a heist is happening in. Exactly. Exactly. It's completely different. Yeah. So I, I immediately felt a visceral no to that one when, when I saw it. Yeah, me too. Other people's lists. Yeah, it was like, oh, that's a heist film. Like, no, it's not. Yeah. No, it's not. And I think we left Rafifi off because probably Haven't neither one it. of us have seen it. Haven't seen it. I know I, it's supposed to be one of the best. I, I don't know if I could enjoy a 30-minute heist scene with no music and no dialogue. I'm not sure if I can, but we'll yeah. see. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. I mean, Maybe I... Maybe I'll eventually see it, and that's just me being kind. I don't yeah. think I'll ever see that. I'll probably see it sometime this week just because I'm an asshole about that shit. Um, all right. Well, what, is that all you have? Goodfellas no, honorable I mean, mention? Uh, genuine have... honorable yeah, yeah, mentions? Genuine. Uh, uh, Three Kings. Oh, Three Kings great. Sexy right. Beast. Mm -hmm. Ronan. Not really, though. I was like, eh. Yeah. Um, bank job. Oh, yeah. And lock, stock, and two smoking barrels. I was, dude, I was so close with lock, stock. Yeah, I like that movie end, a lot. Yeah. It, it, yeah, it could have. It could have. There was a version of this list where it could have made that list. Shotguns. You mean guns that fire shots then? Yeah. Oh, you're the brains of the outfit, are you? <laughs> um, I had Snatch, speaking of uh, what's okay. his face. I did have Sexy Beast. I had Out of Sight. Because of the jewels, they're going after All right, sure. Albert Brooks's jewels. Yeah. Um, I did have the sting as an honorable mention, Ronan, Three Kings, Thief, the James Conn one, which I really, really fucking love. Yeah. With Tuesday Weld. Yeah, I watched uh, that like a month ago. Yeah, also Michael Mann. Uh, but I it's, it doesn't it doesn't quite get there. It's a good, good film. And if you haven't seen it and you love eighties like synthesizer, Michael Mann, Manhunter phase, band of the hand shit, enjoy Thief is good. Oh yeah. That's the other thing on the opening credits on Wanda. Yeah. It is a pure 80s opening soundtrack. Absolutely. With this like synthesized bass. And it's just like a, a couple years later, we get Seinfeld's theme. That's right. That's right. Like, okay, this was a thing. I forgot about this. Like late 80s into early 90s for generic soundtrack stuff. All right. All right. Who, uh, who's banging? Do you remember? I believe 
Is it your turn? Is it? I think it's your turn. All right, we'll make it happen this way. Yeah, that would make sense, because you did it on the first one. At number one. Oh, number ten. Sorry, number ten. <laughs> But wait, wait, wait. We all know what number one over. is. Let's start over again. You got to do the false setup. Yeah, yeah, too. yeah. Let's start over again. Let's go. <laughs> Cleanse the palate. <laughs> clear the pipes. Me, 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 me. Uh, the top ten heist movies. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. At number ten. The town. At number nine. Baby driver. At number eight. A fish called Wanda. At number seven. The Thomas Crown Affair. At number six. The Sting. Starting out our top five. Inception. At number four. Reservoir Dogs. At number three. The Usual Suspects. At number two. Ocean's Eleven. Grumble, grumble. A little high. And (laughs) the number one heist film is... Heat. Heat. Yeah, good film. A gem. It, It really is. I'm buying that one. I mean, seven dollars and eighty-eight cents. I think you can afford that for a new, deep, new Blu-ray of that film. That's it's such a. Good That's all it is. Yeah, seven dollars eighty-eight cents on Amazon what's right the, now. What's the digital copy? I think it's like a double. It has a digital copy on it. I think. Okay. So you could. You both. still got to buy the physical to get the digital. Yeah. You can't just get it downloaded. Oh, I'm sure you can, but you, I don't know if you get all the special features. I don't know how that works with the digital uh, okay. stuff nowadays. You would think it'd be even easier with digital. Yeah. Because. Well, I'm a hunter-gatherer. I like to hold it in my hands. Yeah, exactly. And you then you you hold in your hands a hard drive. That has thousands of movies on it. That's, That's what you fair. do. That's fair. You just transfer that with you. And now why, if a fire happens, right. you don't have to choose which DVD. You just grab the hard drive. That's why you're a man of science. That's why you're a man of science. A man of laziness. Yeah, come on. I've moved enough times. <laughs> I've had to move boxes of DVDs. Oh, now I just have to move one thing. <laughs> Makes life a lot easier. Oh well, that's that's our show. The top ten heist movies. Uh, yep. Go go see Lucky Logan. What is it again? Logan Lucky. Logan Lucky. Go see it and and tell us what you think. Because I think Matt and I are going to try and catch it uh, ourselves separately this weekend. Uh, but definitely, like, let, tweet us. You know, it's yeah. always. It's always great. Tell us what your lists are. You know, interact with us. You know, we enjoy it. Post it on Facebook. Whatever you want to do, uh, let us know. Uh, Matt, where can they reach you? Um. They can reach me on uh, or on Twitter at Matt Nost or on Instagram at the same, M-A-T-T-K-N-O-S-T. Right. Uh, hit us up there. Um, I usually, I try and respond to as many as I can. There are days when I can't, like yesterday, I was just busy all day. By the right. time I got to it, it was like, oh my God, there's yeah. hundreds. Yeah. I feel bad for those. I'll try, I'll cherry pick and go through ones that's just like, okay, you need an answer. I'll give you an answer. Right. Uh, whereas others uh, just be like, well, the general consensus is you already got a response from John. Because there have been times where I've just, what John said, yeah, like once or twice. Yeah. I don't do it all the time, but it's just like, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> you don't need to really hear from me when I'm trying to rifle back. Other times, it's just, they come in a perfect stream, and I've got a day where I can check my phone yeah. every once an hour or once every 90 minutes. That's when I know you've been on, when I have like 10 fucking tweets that are, that are yours tag, with me tagged. I'm like, oh, Matt's been on. Yeah. I can tell Matt's been on. There's just days where you got more time, and I can yeah. do this throughout the day, and there are other days it's just like a, a fuck. <laughs> I'm behind the eight ball. Do I even want to start this mountain, this yeah. Sisyphean task, or just kind of let the boulder roll past and get the next one? Just move on, move on. Yeah. Um, do you want to tell them what we're kicking around? Yeah, we, we've we got an idea in the hopper. Yeah. Um, I think we need to kick it around a little bit more amongst our, the two of us. Yeah. Um, but potentially some changes coming up. Yeah. Uh, nothing huge. Not negative. Yeah. Not negative, negative changes on it's because be the we're exact same that. show yeah, yeah, yeah. that you've always loved. It's something on the periphery yeah. that some people have uh, offered up help on. Yeah. And be like, you know what? We might take you up on that finally. Mm-hmm. Um, so hopefully we'll have an announcement in the near future by yeah. next week's show, something like that. Next week or a couple weeks. Yeah. yeah or the, the week after, sometime soon. Yeah. Once again, we do. We are busy. So trying to fit all the extras now in on top of even doing this. Yeah. It takes a little bit longer than it used to. Yeah, man. When we did five shows a week. <laughs> it's, 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 there are days where I'm just like, there's like two or three hours where I don't have anything to do and I'm almost like fucking nervous. Like, why well, don't have anything to do? And I'll just sit around and just like, just enjoy the two or three hours of nothing. Like, it's just brilliant. Yeah. I love the days when I have nothing. Yeah. It's awesome. So You're like, I can sleep today. Yeah, it looks like I can. What? Yeah, we, my wife and I, a couple of times in the past month, just like, let's just lay in bed and watch TV or yeah. movies all day. Yeah, man. Like, hell yeah, let's turn on the AC. What do you want to drink? I'll go make it, yeah. get this thing fired up, and just waste five hours. Like, we watched uh, Conspiracy Theory the other day in the midst of watching 
a couple of TV shows. The Julia Roberts one? Yeah, with Mel, with Gibson? Mel Gibson. Oh, wow. She just suggested, and I was like, you know what? That's perfect. We're yeah. lying in bed. Yeah. Let's just enjoy ourselves. Yeah. I don't need to stress my mind. It's a decent film. It's an enjoyable it film. It is. It's very fun. Yes. Patrick Stewart is chilling in that film. Yeah, he is. Yeah. That Band-Aid on his nose. So unsettling. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, so that's it. So, you know. Yeah. As vague as that is and as ambiguous, stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, there we we may have something in the near future to discuss. <laughs> Absolutely. And thanks, everybody, for uh, tweeting at us and everything like that. And and, and po- uh, posting it on your social medias. That's really important. Share it with social medias. Encourage your friends and family to download us, to subscribe to us, to subscribe to the show, the yeah. SK Plus podcast channel, because like they have a bunch of shows on there, and it shows it shows really well on us if we're bringing people into this subscription. Yeah, vocal for, people yeah. that are interactive, that... that you guys have made your voice heard so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That continue it as best you can. Yeah. I realize it's easier to do when you're pissed off and you want something back as opposed to when you've finally been satiated. Yeah, don't get soft. Yeah. Don't get soft because we're back. We need an edge. Yeah. But the thing is, like, if you guys want the show to continue, we need your help. Yeah. So just be vocal. Try and share it. Tell somebody you like the show, whatever the mm-hmm. case is. Leave a comment. Yeah. Give a like. Do a, whatever the, the least amount you're willing to do. If you can go above that threshold, awesome. Yeah. But you know, please give us something, whatever the case is, because every little bit helps. And that will actually ensure us sticking around this time around. Absolutely. As opposed to getting a year and a half in going, it's just too much work again. The benefits are killing us. Like benefits aren't good enough and we're killing ourselves. Right. Exactly. Uh so if you help us, we'll help you. Exactly. And we'll keep this show on the air. Yeah. You gotta help us, Jerry Maguire, this motherfucker. Help me help you. Exactly. Um and patronize the shows that you got you got the Wanger show. You got uh, After Schmodown, uh, Beardo, Don't Be a Beardo. You got Outlaw Nation. You got a bunch of shows on there that, that people enjoy listening to. So patronize those shows and, mm-hmm. and listen to them, leave them comments. You can follow me at The Roca Says on Twitter and on Instagram. Uh, you know, The Cinephiles every Friday morning, uh, Outlaw Nation every Thursday morning on SK+. Plus. And then uh, now I'm writing at the tracking board, tracking-board.com. You can read my columns, my controversial columns there. You guys know I never shy away from that kind of shit. So uh, thanks again for listening to us. Matt, anything you want to tell them? Nope, that's it. Ooh.